Hello everyone, so this time let's discuss how to make a proper pacing harness. From our base formula, wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. But the actual formula for the pacing harness is actually one port wavelength of a piece of coaxial cable multiplied by its velocity factor and an add number multiplier to lengthen or shorten the length of the pacing harness. So later on in the video, I will be showing you how to visualize if we get, get the correct computation on our pacing harness based on its pace angle using the antenna analyzers, either one of the two and 121 SA with pace angle and the nano BNA with pace angle trace enabled. So let's go ahead and proceed to the Excel sheet calculator. This one is an Excel sheet calculator which I made for simply computing the length of the pacing harness. But first we need to define the parameters required by the calculator. Wavelength should be in meters. The speed of light is constant at 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. Frequency is in hertz or cycles per second. We just plug in the value of the constant and the frequency of interest on the equation and it will automatically compute for the total length of the pacing harness. Check if it's okay to use the length or the resulting length or not. So once we obtain the correct length of the pacing harness, this one will say okay. So we can proceed in cutting the length of the pacing harness, single side each, combining it together will give us 2.88 or the total length of the pacing harness. I just use centimeters for conversion so that the cutting would be more precise. So let's go ahead for our example. We have a seven element Yagi in twin configuration that requires us to mount it with a separation of four feet side by side with two feet each side from the center of the antenna mass. So this will give us 13.3 dBi gain on the center frequency 144 MHz. This is the design frequency of the antenna which we will need to put on the pacing harness calculator because the pacing harness required us to obtain the center frequency of the antenna and use it in computing for the actual length of the pacing harness at the center frequency. So frequency should be in hertz. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's 145 million hertz for 145 megahertz. Coax velocity factor is obtainable from coaxial data sheet of usually from the dealer of the coaxial cable or the coaxial cable manufacturer. Add number multiplier is the multiplying factor to increase or shorten the length of the basing harness. Stacking distance is the required stacking distance. Based on our diagram, it's four feet total separation. So this can be computed as well using 4 neck 2 antenna modeling. You can see the sample on how to compute for the best stacking distance on my YouTube channel. Just search for the title of the video, how to compute for the best stacking distance. The parameter for the coaxial cable data sheet is usually obtainable from the coaxial data sheet which I have here on my website. This is an Endura 75 ohm coaxial cable. We are interested in the data sheet because of the velocity factor. So our velocity of propagation or velocity factor is equal to 85%. So I converted it to decimal form, which is 0.85. We just plug in the value of the frequency 144 we have the multiplier set to 1 
So, from our sample, it is still on 145. So, we need to put 144 million cycles per second. So, our calculator checks if we input the correct value of the frequency. If not, the calculator will not compute for the correct value. So, we make sure that the value we input are correct and the calculator will compute it automatically for us giving us the total length and the length for each side of the pacing harness. So, from this computation, it says no, we cannot use the resulting computation. So, the next logical step would be to increase the multiplier to another add number which the next logical step would be 3 so it recomputes the value the total length now is 8.71 feet or 265.44 centimeter for the total length each side is 132.72 centimeters which is correct the length of the basing harness can be used so we can cut each side of the pacing harness to 132 and proceed in connecting the collector at, on each side of the pacing harness and we can connect it to the T connector and check for the pace angle, resulting pace angle based on the computation. So how, how sure are we that this calculator is correct? So let's compare it to a uh, website calculator for a dipole so this is a dipole calculator from omnicalculator.com which compute for the wavelength half wavelength and one part wavelength we are only interested on these values because those are the parameters that we will be using to compute for our pacing harness so we will be comparing the result of these three values based on the input frequency from our calculator this is a dipole calculator, so we need to. Oh, we don't need to take note of the dipole leg or the length of the each dipole and the total length. This is computed with an adjustment factor, which you can also find on the website. The K is defined as adjustment factor, which you cannot change from the calculator. So, you can see it in the advanced mode, but on the simple mode, you cannot explain how it comes up with those values because the dipole length is equal to the one port wavelength. So, let's ignore that and just concentrate on the wavelength, half wavelength, and the one port wavelength from our antenna calculator. So, 144 megahertz, we input the value here. The calculator is using megahertz to compute for the value. So as we compare it on our calculator, the resulting value is similar. Only the rounding up is a little bit different. It's the number of resolution. So what if we use 145? So we need to change it to 145. Oops, we missed another zero. So it's 145. Let's recheck the calculator from the website. So it gives us the same value, wavelength, one half wavelength, and one port wavelength. What if we use 165 megahertz or any other frequency? Let's say 200. So that's not a problem. We can input. 200 million cycles per second here and recheck the calculator. So wavelength the same, half wavelength the same, one port wavelength the same. So this antenna calculator is properly working and I will be putting a link for you to download the calculator and use it in your computation of the pacing harness. But take note that the parameter should be met properly for it to work correctly. So what if you have 
um, you are making the actual pacing harness. So you have to consider the total bend of the coaxial cable and include it on your stacking distance computation. In this case, we did not include the bends. We just put the total separation to 4 feet as we defined it on our stacking distance. So if you need to compensate for the bend, for the total length of the, your, your pacing harness, you have to measure it and put it as your stacking distance or part of your stacking distance so you just need to add the bend plus your stacking distance separation from your antenna diagram. So that's it. Let's proceed to the video and I will be showing you if the final product was made correctly by comparing the base angle of the pacing harness because this is a pacing harness we are concerned with the pace angle of the uh, resulting pacing harness based on our computation so let's go ahead to the second video so this time i will be showing you how to make a proper pacing harness for combining two or more antennas and what reading should we expect from our antenna analyzer so basically this <coughs> Pacing harness is designed for 144 MHz center frequency as we can see on the antenna analyzer. So what we need to do is to make a pacing harness out of a 75 ohms coaxial cable. The formula for the pacing harness is the wavelength or the one port wavelength of the center frequency multiplied by coax velocity factor and add number multiple to cover the antenna spacing. So basically what that means is when you combine each side of the pacing harness, you have to make sure that the length, the total length of the pacing harness is enough to cover the antenna spacing or antenna separation. So let's go on to the readout that we need to expect from our antenna analyzer so what we need to see on our antenna analyzer is the frequency of interest the reactance should be zero the S11 should be zero or the reflection coefficient in this case the reflection coefficient of our pacing harness so both the S11 at the bottom and the S11 on top here is zero. Our pace angle is 179.8 or 180. So we are concerned with the pace angle because what we want is to make our RF signal arrive with the same pace angle at the same time when we are combining our antennas. So we can confirm this readout on the nano VNA later on. So I'm going to attach the nano VNA and con confirm the readout from the N121SA to the nano VNA. So this time I have connected the pacing harness to the nano VNA. So let's check if we can get the same response from our pacing harness when we use the nano VNA to read the S11 and pace angle of the pacing harness. So let me just focus the camera. So as we can see here, we have 143.8 megahertz or very close to 144. We have the pace angle on top which is 179.65 or exactly 180 or log mag or antenna return loss or this for this case spacing harness return loss is minus zero which is correct so if we go down at the bottom of the 
carb of the pacing harness pace angle we have 179.66 so let's adjust the frequency to 144 same we have 179.31 which is good enough for our pacing harness and this one is pretty usable for our purpose so again our readout from the end 121 essay is basically the same with our nano VNA for our pacing harness so that's it I hope this helps you and until next time thank you for watching